The classical computer that you have right now can do this in six tries. But what's even more impressive is that a quantum computer can do this in one try. Hi, welcome back to Coding with Kiskit. This is Abe. Let's say there's a secret number hidden inside a box, and that number is described by six bits, so six strings of zeros and ones. How many attempts do you think you need in order to guess that number correctly? If you had a classical computer, you could find that secret six-bit number in six tries. And in fact, if that six-bit number was instead 60 bits, that would take you 60 tries. And in general, if it had n bits, you'd need n tries in order to find that secret number. So this thing can quickly add up, right? But if you had a quantum computer, then you can use what's known as the bernstein wasserand algorithm to determine that secret number in one shot, independent of the size of that number. So what I hope to do in this video is show you how to implement this algorithm in Qiskit. So the bernstein wasserand algorithm is an example of many quantum algorithms where a quantum computer outperforms a classical computer. So let's ask our computer to guess a secret number. And in particular, this is going to be a binary number. So it's going to be described by bits, strings of ones and zeros. And let's say we write down the secret number. In this case, I'm going to pick a specific one. Uh, it's going to be 101001. And I put that secret number in a box. Now, the point of this box is to give us one function. And that function is, if you feed it a guess, it will tell you yes or no. So how would you determine the secret number given this box where you don't know what's inside it? One way to do it would be to ask this box, hey, is the number inside 000000? 000 000 000 000 000? And the box would say, no, that's not the number in here. So then you change the number and ask, is the box having the number 000, 000 001 inside? And the box would tell you, no, that's not the number. And you do this until you stumbled upon the right answer, which is the secret number inside the box. Here's how your computer would do it. So your computer would write down the number 000, 001 next to the box, and it would apply what's called an end operation. And when it does this, the end operation is effectively going to tell it one wherever the two numbers are one and zero when they're not one together. So this gives you zero, this gives you zero, this gives you zero, this gives you zero, and this gives you zero. So by doing this, what your computer has done is figured out that this digit is one in the box. And then your computer would continue by doing the same operation using zero, one, zero here. And as you can see, what it's doing is trying to figure out if that second number is also one. And by doing this with a third end operation, a fourth end operation, and doing effectively six end operations, it would figure out how many of the digits in the secret number are one. And by doing so, the computer would be able to find out what the secret number is inside the box in six tries instead of the 64 that it took by just guessing randomly. So where did we start off? 64 tries to find that secret number seems like a lot of work. The classical computer that you have right now can do this in six tries. But what's even more impressive is that a quantum computer can do this in one try. And what I'd like to do is show you how this algorithm works on Qiskit. So as always, I'm going to first import Qiskit. So I'm going to say from Qiskit, import everything. And I'm going to prepare to visualize my results by saying matplotlib inline. And from qiskit.tools.visualization, import plot histogram. So now we're ready to start working with Qiskit. And I'm now going to say the secret number is 101001. Zero, one, zero, zero, one. So this is the secret number that we've been talking about so far. So let's start by building a circuit made from six, which is the number of bits that we have in the secret number, plus one qubits, and six classical bits on which we'll store results. And what I'll do is start off by applying a Hadamard gate to 
the first six qubits out of the seven qubits that I'm using. So I'll say Hadamard on 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So these are the first six qubits. All right, so let's apply that. And as always, let's do circuit.draw output equals matplotlib. And that's how our circuit looks right now. For the last qubit, I'm going to do one more thing, which is to ask for an X gate before applying a Hadamard on it. So I'm going to say circuit.x on qubit six and circuit.h on qubit six. All right, let's see how that looks. So now this is how our circuit looks. We have Hadamards on all the qubits with this additional X gate on the last qubit. I'll put a barrier here so that things are a bit clearer for us. A barrier simply adds this vertical line that you're seeing here. And now what I'm going to do is build the box that contains the secret number. So remember that the secret number is written here. And what I'm going to do is for every one that I see in the secret number, I'm going to put a CX gate. And in particular, the way I'm going to apply the CX gates is as follows. So I'm going to say circuit.cx. You see this one on this first bit. So I'm going to go from the last qubit that we didn't have the X on up to that qubit that is the last qubit in the lines. So I'm going to say CX from five to six and see how that works. Yep, so that's the first one in our secret number. So let's keep doing this. So the secret number is 101001. So the fifth bit is going to have a controlled X. The third bit is going to have a controlled X. So I'll do three. And finally, the zeroth bit is going to have a controlled X. So this is how our circuit looks. Let's draw it. So now the easiest way to see that the secret number is encoded in this box is by reading off one when you see a controlled X and zero when you don't. So one, zero, one, zero, zero, one here. And that's the box that encodes the secret number. So I'll make it clear by applying a barrier here again. And this is how our circuit looks. And finally, what I'm going to do is apply another set of Hadamard gates. So I'm going to apply that operation again. And that's how our circuit looks. And that's it. We've now built the bernstein vasorani algorithm. So in order to understand how this circuit works, I'm going to add measurements at the end. So I'll put another barrier and I'll say circuit.measure and in particular put the results from bits 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 into the classical bits 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that's how the circuit looks. Now we're done and we're ready to simulate the circuit. So let's run the circuit to see that it's working. So what I'm going to do is say the simulator is air.get backend chasm simulator. And I'm going to execute the circuit that we've built so far. I'm going to choose the backend to be the simulator. And I'm going to say I want one shot because I promised you that this would all be done in one shot. I'm going to take the result of this execution and store it into a variable called result. And then I'm going to say counts is result.get counts. And then what I'll do is print out the count so that we see what the output is. And as you can see here, in that one shot that we did, the result was 101001. So the circuit was able to guess our secret number in that one shot. Now let's try a little bit of an advanced example. So what I'm going to try to do here is to generalize the code so that it works on any secret number. So to make this a bit more general, here are the changes that I'm going to do. So instead of saying apply the Hadamard gate to qubits zero through five, what I'm going to say is apply the circuit dot H going through range length of secret number. So in Python, what this does is return exactly the array zero through five for this particular secret number. And again, what I'm going to do is comment this line out and say, apply this to the last qubit. 
and then apply this item art also to the last qubit. Okay, so again, let's rerun our piece of code. See how the circuit looks, nothing has changed. So what we've done is change this part to be a bit more general. Now let's change the box. So how was the box encoded? We simply applied control X's wherever we saw a one in the secret number. So how would I write down this logic in Python? So I would say for I, I, yes, no, in enumerate the secret number. And in particular, remember that we built the circuit from top to bottom, meaning when we saw a one, the controlled X was applied to the bottom most qubit. And so what we're going to do is not take the secret number, but reverse it. So I'm going to say reversed secret number. I'm going to say if that string contains one, then I'm going to apply a controlled X going from the index of that qubit to the last qubit. Okay, that should do it. So that replaces these lines of code. So I'll comment these out. And finally, so let's check again how our circuit looks. Again, we have 101001 one, here. We're going to say all these Hadamard gates again can get replaced with this line of code. I'll comment this out. Look at the drawing again. See that nothing has changed. And the measurements, of course, going from this range again. to this range. And that's it. So we've now rebuilt the circuit in a more general piece of code. The last change I'm going to make is change this number. So the quantum circuit that we're building is not just composed of six qubits anymore, but the length of the secret number plus one. And it's going to have as many classical bits as there are bits in the secret number. So that's it. This builds our circuit in a more general form. And in particular, if I were to go and change the secret number from 101001 to something like 111000, the circuit would be updated. And I can use this circuit to find that secret number in one shot. And again, it's not just that I can change the secret number in these two forms, but I can also change the length of the secret number. And the quantum circuit should update to accommodate that change in the length of the secret number. So hey Paul, do you want to give me a hand here? So what I'd like you to do is change the secret number up top to something that you'd like. And I'll cover my eyes as you do this and remember to hit shift enter after you're done and scroll it so that I don't see that secret number. Okay. Any number. Any, Any number. Any amount of numbers. Yep. Shift enter. Scroll down to the bottom. So that I don't see it. Okay. Okay, so I'm claiming here that I can find your secret number, Paul, by running the quantum circuit, and it looks like your secret number was one, one zero, mm -hmm. zero, one, zero, mm -hmm. one, zero, 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 one, 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 zero, one, zero, one, zero. Was that, was that your secret number? Say it again. <laughs> Instead of talking to Paul, I have a better way here, which is that I'm going to go up and look at the secret number and do a comparison side by side by pasting it here. So I'm confident now looking at this that I did find the right number. So this is cool, right? So for the classical computer, we needed six tries to find the secret number. But as it turns out, for the quantum computer, we only needed one try. If you'd like to learn more about the mathematics behind the algorithm, we suggest that you take a look at the link below to the online Qiskit textbook. And in fact, now that you're equipped with the knowledge to understand these quantum circuits and write them and execute them, what you can do is take a look at the other quantum algorithms in the Qiskit textbook and see if you can run those as well. So one thing that you could do is also to try to run this quantum circuit on real hardware. Tell us in the comments down below what results you find when you do this. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.